All right, so here's the uh, spacer plate. This is your one, two uh, feed hole and your two, three feed hole. I'm not actually gonna drill these at all, simply because, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, transmission, I have no idea where it's going or you know what kind of hole sizes I'll need to end up with. But um, if you're running just a regular factory setup and you want a little bit firmer shift, you can drill these out. Um, I like to go at least start and see how things go with maybe like 100 thousandths on the one, two and maybe 110 on the two, three. Uh, and then, you know, go from there if I need, feel like I need to adjust. Uh, if you're running a shift kit, the shift kit will, you know, prescribe the whole sizes for you, or at least, a, you know, a place to start. Uh, if you're running a higher stall converter, then you're obviously going to go uh, a little bit more aggressive on these. So maybe 125 thou, 150 thou for the 2.3 if you're running real high stall uh, and or, you know, you, you know, you really need to um, offset that, you know, uh, an excessively loose converter, um, in a racing application. So, um, it all be depend on like, you know, what your specific, uh, preferences are for shift firmness, as well as, uh, things such as your, you know, your cams duration and lift and, um, you know, your final drive ratio, tire size, etc. uh, so that you can match all that to, um, you know, how the transmission behaves, especially at, uh, you know, more aggressive throttle and, and, and higher speeds. So it'll be up to you to see how you want to have that play out. Um, that'll determine what kind of hole sizes uh, will work for you. Just make sure you position your gasket appropriately. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a couple of uh, valve body bolts here on the end. just to make sure I'm good to go. And then go ahead and install your channel cover plate. Half inch bolts, all the short ones. So you got seven of these. And then these take 156 inch pounds. All the valve body bolts take 156 inch pounds as well. I mean, you can go from anywhere of 140 to 156. I mean, anywhere in that range would be fine. aligned perfectly. Okay. Like anything else, I mean, if you see something that's a little bit off, you want to correct it now versus, you know, just trying to force it. And then with these bolts, I'll just start kind of in the middle and work my way out. I mean, it's not particularly fussy or, you know, there's no sequence per se, just a habit.
So get your S hook in position. As well as your kick down lever or kick down lever rod. And then what you're going to want to do is if your uh, kick down cable assembly does not already have a new seal on it, or you're reusing your old one, it's a good opportunity to install the seal. It goes literally right behind the uh, bell. It's uh, in this location right here where my finger's pointing. So right behind the bell on the passenger side, that's where that seal's gonna go. All right, and then you just want to maneuver this in place. Again, make sure you got both the uh, S-hook engaged on the manual valve as well as the um, kick-down lever in position in its respective location there on the uh, passenger side. Bell body does not take check balls. All right, now it's not gonna sit flush because you have your van servo kind of holding it back here on the uh, two, three accumulator. Then once you put the bolts in and zip them down, then you'll be fine. All right, half inch bolts. And they're all pretty much the same length. I should say they're all exactly the same length, not pretty much. So it doesn't matter which holes they go into, just as long as they're all there. All right, let's torque them up. So I generally go from the you know, kind of the inside out. Again, with the torque sequence, it's it's up to you. This is just a general best practice when it comes to torquing parts like this down. Um, the book does not call for any specific you know numbered sequence like you would say on like cylinder head bolts or, or anything like that. But um, you know, just following an in to out process or pattern rather, should be sufficient for pretty much any transmission, any valve body that uh, you're installing. So, um, in the event you feel like a bolt not wanting to torque, that's mean, you know, that generally means that the, uh, you know, that the threads are in the process of stripping out. If it's only one bolt and it's still tight, you could leave it. It's not going to make a difference. You're not going to hurt anything. Uh, if you you know come across that with multiple bolts or multiple thread locations, then you're going to want to take the valve body off and do some thread repair and install a, a heel coil insert or something like that.
She'll love how long it took me to figure out the right way to put that. All right, filter. I would recommend you install a, a deep pan, deep aluminum pan that gives you maybe an, up, an extra couple of quarts of capacity, especially if you live in a hot, dry, arid climate like I do. I'm in the uh, desert southwest. So, you know, hot, dry, arid, you're going to want something, uh, you're going to want every bit of cooling capacity or, you know, cooling advantage that you can take so that the trans um, doesn't overheat. And, you know, between this and like a, a good aftermarket standalone transmission cooler to be used in conjunction with, not in replacement of, but in conjunction with your radiator's internal transmission cooler, um, you know, that'll go a long way ensuring that the transmission stays healthy and um, doesn't overheat and lasts a long time. Uh, if you got exhaust running real close to the transmission, you probably want to wrap it with some heat shielding. You don't want any part of the trans being exposed directly to exhaust heat. And so that will help you keep the transmission alive for as long as it needs to be. All right, I paused the video for a couple minutes, tried to hunt down some additional pan bolts. Um, I remember when I got this core in, it actually did not come with all the bolts. So, um, and it's been a while since I worked on this. Uh, this video is being shot about a month or so after the other um, videos in this series because some other things came up and, you know, I had to put this on the shelf for a minute. But, um, you know, I think I covered like what to do with pan bolt torque and all that. And like I said, this is going to come off anyway because I don't know exactly what I'm going to need to do with respect to things like hole sizes for the spacer plate feed holes and you know there may be other things that I need to do um so I'm just gonna zip these on so I can just uh you know store it somewhere in the meantime and then once I figure out the direction that I want to head in with it or you know if somebody wants to purchase it from me you know, they could tell me kind of what they want. <clears throat> so, the extension housing, you're just going to make sure that you have your your O-ring or your, your square cut seal on. So, you just slip it on, you know, pretty, pretty common sense. Just make sure it's not twisted. That's all, you know, you're really worried about is getting it twisted. It'll leak if it's twisted and probably break. Um, as far as the speedometer gear assembly, so here is your driven gear. This is the assembly itself. In there, there's going to be a seal. And then inside, um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, there you go. You see a seal and there's a little retainer in there. It's a little wire retainer, you know, kind of like a snap ring. Uh, just make sure that's there. And then, um, you know, when you go to install it, obviously put assembly lube or something on the uh, O-ring seal. Uh, I'm not sure, again, what, uh, what I'm going to use ultimately as far as uh, driving driven gear. But when you do install it, this is how it's going to go in. And then you just install it and you tighten up the bracket. Again, I just go snug. But I'm sure that there's a torque spec. If I can find it, I will... Um, I will put it uh, on the video so that you know what that is. Anyway, um, that's the TH350. I also have to reinstall the cooler line fittings. I'll do that later. Um, but, you know, this build was kind of a, you know, ad hoc type deal uh, to more or less show you what a um, high performance build could look like uh, depending upon, um, you know, what you wanted to do with it and how it was going to be used. But, uh, you know, just to show you some of the different mods you can make and um, some of the different things you can do to beef up the transmission um, without spending a huge ton of money. So um, anyway, I 
I appreciate you watching as always. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, if you have questions, just go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. Uh, thank you again.